Water? Gotta hydrate before we start baking. She always wants to close it. Thank you, thank you. What? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I got a little sous chef here with me today, Miss Seiji, as you have probably seen her in like every single one of my videos. We are gonna be doing a one to two year meal prep for toddlers. That's the stage we're in. I've been cooking up a lot of stuff. And a couple of recipes actually I've made with Sage, if you aren't following me on Instagram, we have a couple of reels on there of Sage helping out with some recipes. So today she's gonna help me out with one of the recipes in today's video. So the first recipe we're gonna make is actually baked pancakes. If you have never made baked pancakes, it is the best thing ever with toddlers because you don't have to worry about flipping it, flipping pancakes, you just bake it all. Okay, we need another banana. Was this a good idea or a bad idea bringing her on? So essentially, you just make your regular pancake batter. This pretty much works with most pancake recipes, but I'm making the one from my cookbook. Um, this is the Everyday Gluten-Free Pancake Recipe on page 49. I love these, I've been making them for years, and I like them because they are healthy, they're quick, they're simple, and you can make them for the full family. The full family, it's kind of weird, the whole family. Oven is preheated, so all we're gonna do is just mix everything in one bowl. Say, do you wanna put that in the bowl? So we're gonna mash that up. If you guys have not watched them yet, I actually have a baby meal prep for the intro to solid stage six to eight months, and then I have another one for nine to 12 months, and so this one is the next stage. And these are basically the foods that I've been making for Sage a lot. And I find breakfast to be the hardest meal to get her to eat. Um, she's not really into oatmeal anymore. Eggs are like hit or miss. So cake for breakfast it is. <laughs> okay, we're gonna crack in a couple eggs. Mm. I basically know this recipe by heart because I've been making it for years. It's actually like one of my first pancake recipes I ever created and Still going strong, like 10 years later. Good job. That's so good. Can mommy help you? Whoa, eggs everywhere. So we're just gonna whisk that up. There's probably egg on the wall. Okay, we're gonna add in our unsweetened almond milk. Whoa. And then all in one bowl, just to make it easy, we have brown rice flour. You can use regular all-purpose flour if that's what you have on hand. I just like to add something that has a little bit more fiber in it. It's naturally gluten-free if that's what you need for your kids. I know some, some have allergies or sensitivities towards gluten. Sage doesn't, and I try to do a mix of gluten, non-gluten, and just like different flours and grains. Cinnamon. No, that. Baking powder, coconut oil that's been melted and cooled, and just a little bit of sea salt. And what I like about it is that it is naturally sweetened with banana, no added sugar. And that's one thing I really try to focus with Sage's meals is just no added sugar. We sweeten with fruit. Wait, do we add the, wait a minute. I basically know this recipe by heart because I've been making it for years. Oh no. No. No, I added, one and a half cups of almond milk. It was supposed to be half a cup. How did mommy mess this up? I've made this so many times. Okay, crisis averted. We are back with the right recipe. Good, get all that flour incorporated. Don't overmix your pancake batter. Incorporate until there is no visible flour. Okay, I have a baking pan lined with some parchment paper and just buttered so it can stick. Okay, we're gonna add some some berries to it. Pop, drop, pop, pop. Here. <laughs> Over here, good job. This may be the cutest video I've ever filmed. This looks perfect, Sage. Evenly spread out. Okay, we're gonna put this in the oven to bake at 350. 
trying to figure out the new baby lock. Okay, into the oven. I don't know about you guys, breakfast is so hard here. I would love to get any ideas. What do you guys feed your toddlers? Leave me a comment down below. Like I said, she's not really into eggs or oatmeal right now, so I'm just trying to think of creative things to serve her for breakfast. By the way, if you guys have not checked it out yet, definitely pick up a copy of the Baby Health Nut Cookbook. It is a digital cookbook I created with all the recipes that I fed Sage from six months really until now. We were still cooking out of that cookbook. It was created specifically for that six to 12 month stage. And we're gonna actually make one of the recipes from it for one of our snacks today. And I have to say this girl is really hard when it comes to fruits but she's now into the raspberries. If I mix them up with strawberries, which are her favorite, she'll sometimes eat them. But this just goes to show, like if you get your kids cooking with you in the kitchen, they're more likely to actually eat the food that you're making for them and maybe even try something new or something that they tend to not gravitate towards. Oh yes, they are ready, they are hot. You're gonna let this completely cool and then you can slice it into portions. Uh, you can freeze it, store it in the fridge and then you just warm it up uh, when you're ready to serve. I usually just do it on a pan with a little bit of water, cover it with a lid uh, just so it doesn't get too dried out and you can have this all week long or if your little one is like Sage and she doesn't really like eating the same thing a few days in a row, you could just serve it for two days and then freeze it and enjoy it the next week. Next up we're gonna make my soft peanut butter coconut cookies from the Baby Health Nut Cookbook. I have the recipe up on my phone. So because I'm already using the oven for the pancakes, we're gonna jump into the snack next. So we can just pop these in right after. Probably best to not have a glass bowl, but that's all I have. Once again, we're using banana to sweeten. Now, if you don't wanna use banana, you could try to do applesauce. You could even try like a mango puree. I haven't tried that before. Okay, but Sage, we need them in here. <laughs> Have extra bananas. It's actually her lunch time, so she's just gonna eat all the ingredients. Okay, banana number two. What? We're gonna mash it up. What's your favorite type of snack? Yeah. Snack. Mmm, that sounds like a good one. I'm gonna add an egg. You can double batch them, freeze them and they're great like on the go snacks. Wow. If you guys want the full recipe for these cookies, they're in the Baby Health Nut Cookbook as I mentioned. I'll have a link down below. There's over 30 recipes all made with good wholesome ingredients, no added salt or sugar. Now that Sage is over a year old, we do we have incorporated some good quality like sea salt into her diet, vanilla, but under the age of 12 months, it's uh, a lot of people recommend um, no added salt. We're gonna add in our peanut butter. I didn't realize this was crunchy peanut butter. So if you're making this for um, a smaller babe, you definitely wanna go for the smooth. Make sure that they are not allergic. We've already introduced basically all of the allergens. And luckily, so far we're, we're good. We're in the clear. Oh, go like this. We're gonna add in our dried shredded coconut, unsweetened and just coconut flour. Both are high in fiber, naturally gluten-free as well, and taste delicious. Now, if you are using already chilled peanut butter, you don't have to chill this batter um, before baking, but my jar was just fresh from the store, so it's a little bit more runny, which is fine, but then you just wanna chill it for a bit just to stiffen up so you can actually, like right now, it's quite soft. So you wanna just chill it. I sometimes just stick it in the freezer for like 10 minutes if I'm short for time. It doesn't have to chill long, but just enough that you can actually scoop it. All right, Sagey's having her lunch and then she's gotta go to bed. I'm gonna finish making the cookies. The dough has chilled. Have a little cookie scoop, ice cream scoop, whatever you wanna call it. And you're just gonna go in there, grab a little. And now the dough is actually easier to work with. I'm just gonna roll it into little balls and I just lined a baking tray with some parchment paper so it doesn't stick. This is gonna be your afternoon snack, Sage. I can tell she's tired, she's like, mm. Can we squeeze one last cookie? Don't, don't put it in your mouth, not in your nose, in your mouth. Yeah.
Done? All done. All done. All done. Yeah. Gonna give them a light pat down. Optional, you can just sprinkle them with some more shredded coconut. And then pop them into the oven to bake. All right, and this is what they look like. They're so cute, they're soft, they're good for, you know, if your kids don't have full teeth yet, they just got like hard gums, um, they can gum at it, and I just think that they're just like a fun first cookie, but also into toddler years, Sage loves these. And then also they're dog friendly, so even if you don't have kids, I don't know why you're watching this video, but you can also give them to your dog. So I'm gonna let them fully cool, and then you can serve them obviously right away, or you can store them in the fridge, or the freezer if you want them to last even longer. They they are a fresh baked good and don't really have any preservatives in them so they don't last long like on the counter so if you're not eating them that day I would store them in the fridge or freezer so I'm gonna put these aside and then let's get into oof, our mains all right next up we're gonna make one of Sage's favorite recipes well all of these are Sage's favorites and that's why I'm meal prepping them and showing them to you guys but tofu nuggets it's actually a recipe I've had on the blog for a while I tweaked it just a little bit for her but we make it all the time and she really loves tofu if you you haven't introduced tofu yet to your little ones it's a fun food it's also really easy um, when they're still getting used to more chewy things it's soft we get either firm or extra firm some brands if you get extra firm are really dry um, so this one is still like it's extra firm so it's gonna hold together but it still has lots of moisture in it I just dabbed off a little bit with some paper towel but you can get the firm if or even the medium if you want to do something even softer for your for your little guys or girls and and yeah, so anyways, I just dabbed it. So you wanna have everything ready to go because we're gonna set up a dredging station. So it's essentially when you batter something and then we have a baking sheet already lined with some parchment paper. So I got three bowls. One here has just brown rice flour. So that's gonna be the first thing that we coat in. And then I also have a mixture. I actually did a mixture here. This is your breadcrumbs. I have some rice breadcrumbs as well as this really cool new product that I've tried it on and off over the last few months, but it's called nut crumbs not sponsored but it's basically pistachios almonds cashews salt and black pepper and it's just like a mixture and it's ground as a breadcrumb mixture so if your little ones are good with nuts you can try something like this they even have like a barbecue flavor and I just did half and half I'm gonna have like all the measurements and everything in a blog post down below so to the breadcrumbs I'm gonna add in a little nutritional yeast because we want to add in some flavor nutritional yeast has like a cheesy flavor it's dairy free if you never had it before and then for spices I have salt pepper paprika garlic powder and some black sesame seeds um, this is all customizable if you don't want to add something or you want to change up a spice you can just make it your own and then I'm gonna give that a light whisk with a fork and then for the final bowl you're gonna crack in an egg I used to do two eggs for this recipe, but I feel like if you're doing a large egg, one is good. You could always add a splash of some nut milk if you need to just add a little bit more. Just a little bit. Give that a whisk. Now to prep our tofu, like I said, I already pat dried it with a paper towel. And then you just wanna get a nice sharp knife. And then down the middle again, slice each side in the middle again, and then down the center. Does that make sense? Basically, you just want them to be this size. You can even do smaller, it honestly doesn't matter. You can do triangles, whatever shape you want. So you want everything ready to go and then you also want your prepared baking tray right next to you because as soon as you're done breading, you can just pop it right on. Oven is preheated to 475 and we're gonna start breading. Pro tip, keep one hand for the dry and the other hand for the wet because otherwise you end up with this like mitt of batter on both hands and it just uses up a lot of the batter and it's just like annoying. So one hand for dry, one hand for wet. If you remember nothing else, remember that. And I almost forgot, this is optional, but if you have an oil spray or even one of, I love these like little pumps because you can put any oil that you want and you just can spray the tops. Pop these into the oven to bake and then halfway through, we're gonna flip them so they get crispy on both sides. Like I said, all the directions for these will be down below linked in the info box. So check that out before you leave a comment on, I don't see the information for this recipe. Check the info box. 
The nuggets are out of the oven. They're perfectly golden, so I'm gonna let these cool. These are so fun, because they're crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside, and they're great for dipping. I'll usually use like a no added sugar ketchup, or you could even make like a fun yogurt and tahini sauce, guacamole. They're a great meal prep food. We'll usually serve these for lunch or dinner, and they're always a hit. Next up, we're gonna make some meatballs. So we're gonna make little cute mini meatballs. This is something I make all the time and I just kind of switch it up. I usually just do it off the top of my head from memory, but I am gonna write down the recipe so you guys can make this at home. I have some grass-fed beef. You could use turkey, ground chicken. So we're gonna add in some mixing. So to this, instead of using breadcrumbs, I'm just gonna use some almond flour. If you can't do nuts, then you can just do any breadcrumb that you have on hand. I'm also gonna add some freshly chopped herbs. I have rosemary, oregano, thyme, chopped onion. This is the time to add lots of flavor and get them exposed to different aromatics. So we got uh, garlic as well. And then for seasonings, I just have black pepper, paprika, garlic powder, and I am gonna add the tiniest bit of sea salt. Just a little pinch of sea salt. You wanna be mindful, because if you are using a marinara sauce or a pasta sauce that already has salt in it, you could probably just completely remove the salt. I usually try to look for ones with no salt or at least uh, salted with sea salt instead of just table salt. And then last but not least, I'm gonna add an egg to help bind it all together. And then just get in there with your hands and mix it all together. The nice thing too about adding in breadcrumbs or almond flour to your meatballs is it just makes it a little bit softer when your little ones are chewing it. I actually have a really great meatball recipe in the Baby Health Nut Cookbook. It's called Quinoa with a Chance of Meatballs and it has cooked quinoa in it, which makes it really easy to bite in. It kind of, it holds its shape, but it also breaks apart really easily. So you don't have to worry about them, you know, having to chew on the meat. It's really easy and it's a great first like intro meatball. Okay, so these are good I'm going to form them into little meatballs you can make them as big or as little as you want if you're serving this under one year I would probably make them a little bit bigger so that they can just pick it up and take bites out of it if they're older and shoving everything in their mouth then you want them like little meatball size. Also, I have a pot of water boiling, so we're gonna make some pasta to go with this. And then for sauce, I'm just using, keeping it simple, I'm just using a canned, uh, good quality tomato sauce with uh, not a lot of salt. All right, now that all of our meatballs are rolled up, we're gonna cook them up, and I'm also gonna add in my pasta into the boiling water. I'm actually using chickpea pasta. This is another great tip for toddlers, especially if they're picky or don't eat a lot. Chickpea pasta is just higher in protein and fiber, and so it's just a little bit more nutrient than just regular pasta. So I'm gonna cook this up and the meatballs. Add some oil to your pan. I'll probably do them all. I'm gonna finish them off and just add some store-bought organic marinara sauce. This is optional, you can just leave them as meatballs, but if you want it just ready to go, this is just a faster way. All right, Sage is going to swim, but we thought we, she could sample the cookies that Mommy made. <laughs> um. She did not want to be away from Matt, so Daddy's in the shot. Whoa. Do you want to dip in the milk? Oh, the oh. almond juice. Oh. Want to dip? Dip, 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 dip. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Try it. Mm. Next up, I'm making some garlicky carrots. This is such an easy side to add to any meal. It can even be a snack if your kid likes more savory things. And all it is is you're basically steaming or boiling some little carrot sticks. I just kind of, you can cut them into whatever shapes um, that, are, that suit your little ones best. You can even do um, chop it up into little cubes and then you're just gonna season it after with some yummy things and they taste really good Like a lot of times I'm snacking on them as well And so I'm making a big batch because I find I'll make extra and then she ends up eating it all in one meal So I'm gonna make a lot and then that way I have it for more than one meal time so Boil that for about 10 minutes until fork tender and then we'll season okay. 
add your olive oil and seasoning. I'm using garlic powder, black pepper, and just a tiny bit of sea salt. And you're just gonna mix it all together. I'm telling you, these are so simple yet so flavorful. Sage just gobbles these up every time I make them for her. And you can swap out the olive oil for butter, um, any seasoning that you want. And these are just so great to have on the side, uh, just when you're trying to add like bulk up some veggies in your meals. The texture I like to get them is where you can just squish them whoop, <laughs> with your fingers. And that is the perfect texture, especially if your little one doesn't have teeth yet. You want it soft enough that you can squish between your fingers. Like, these are good for everybody, but Sage loves them and like carrots are naturally sweet, so they're really yummy. And then just for a fruit option, all I did to prep this watermelon was I took a cutting board. Pro tip, if you take a just a wet rag, put it underneath, it'll make it non-slip. And then I sliced it up. I like to slice the ends off and then you have a flat surface to work on. Slice off the peel, slice it across one way and then slice it across the other way. And then you have these little matchsticks and you can make them whatever size that you want. You could even chop them in half. You could cube them up even smaller. And watermelon is just so hydrating, especially during the summer. And and it's just like a fun, crunchy fruit. All these things that you're prepping for your little ones, if they don't like it, you can eat it and enjoy it as well. All right, I'm gonna grab a container to put this in. I'm gonna snack on some first. There you have it, a full meal prep ready to go for your one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old. Really, I feel like this would work for a lot of ages and you can make small customizations depending on how old they are. I love filming these meal prep videos for you guys. I hope you guys find them useful in your own homes with your own families. Also, let me know if you wanna see a video on what my toddler eats in a week. I thought about doing that where I can actually show you how I put these different foods into action on a daily basis and what I add to them just to like make them a complete meal. Leave me a broccoli emoji down below if you want to see that and also definitely check out my other two baby meal prep videos I'll link them here and down below and as I said I'm gonna have a whole blog post on where to get these recipes and all the information and tools that I used in today's video thank you so much for watching be sure to thumbs up subscribe if you want to see more I post here every single week and I will see you in the next one bye guys